This video will introduce Sankey diagrams, which are one of the more fun parts of this unit in my opinion. Sankey diagrams are a way of using pictures to show how much energy is going into a system, how much useful energy or power is coming out, and how much energy or power is lost by the system. Here's an example. In a car, 100 joules of chemical energy in the gas is converted to 40 joules of kinetic energy and 60 joules of thermal energy. The goal of drawing a Sankey diagram is to draw a clear, simple picture to show how much energy is going into a system, how much useful energy is going out, and how much useless energy is being lost by the system. These are the steps to drawing it. First, you're going to decide how much energy each square on your grid represents. I'm choosing each box to be 20 only because I have 100 joules of chemical energy, and the energies it's being split up into are both divisible by 20, so that will probably make this easy without too many squares or too many details. Step number two is to draw a rectangle with a vertical height equal to the total energy going into your system. Label the left side with the type of energy going into the system. So if each box is 20 joules of energy and I have 100 joules of chemical energy going into the system, that means that I'm going to have to draw a rectangle that is five boxes high, because if each box is 20, five boxes is equal to 100 joules. So five boxes are the total energy going in. So I'm going to draw a rectangle like that. And I'm going to label this with the type of energy that's going into the system. Here, that's chemical energy. Step number three is to draw a horizontal arrow pointing right out of the right side of your rectangle with a vertical height equal to the useful energy you are getting out of the system. Label the arrow with the type of energy created. I'm specifically going to draw this on the top of the right side of the rectangle like this. Because the goal of using gas in a car is to get kinetic energy out of the chemical energy, the useful good energy that we're trying to get out here is the kinetic energy. So here the useful good energy is 40 joules because it says that there are 40 joules of kinetic energy. And because each box is 20 joules, I'm going to make the arrow that represents how much useful energy is coming out two boxes high to represent 40 joules altogether. Lastly, I'm going to actually draw the arrow at the end and label it kinetic energy. This is the useful good energy coming out of my system. Step four is to draw a curving arrow out of the rest of the rectangle aiming down with a width equal to the total energy lost. And then we're going to label the type of energy lost. Here we're losing thermal energy. We don't really want the gas to create thermal energy. So because 40 joules was converted into useful good kinetic energy, the rest, 60 joules or three boxes, was converted into bad thermal energy. So I'm going to make this arrow aiming down like this. And this represents the lost energy. And I'm labeling this thermal energy specifically. This is what a Sankey diagram looks like for the situation described. You can see that it's good at showing you the exact proportions of how much energy you're putting into a system versus how much useful and useless energy you're getting out of a system. Here's another situation with a car. This time the car is taking in 100 joules of chemical energy and changing it to just 10 joules of kinetic energy and 90 joules of thermal. I'm going to say again that each box is 20 joules. So this is still going to be five boxes high and chemical is going in. This time though, only 10 joules is being turned into kinetic, which is just going to be one half of one of the boxes in height. So that is the useful energy out. And the rest, the other four and a half boxes or 90 joules is all being lost to thermal energy like this. So that's exactly four and a half boxes high to represent 90 joules. So this Sankey diagram represents that new situation, and you can see that it kind of intuitively shows you how there's more energy being lost in this situation than in the previous situation, and exactly how much more specifically. Another advantage of Sankey diagrams is that we can draw them for much more complicated situations where we're losing multiple types of energy, or the same type of energy multiple times. In this example, a coal power plant is taking in 160 joules of chemical energy. As the coal is burned, 60 joules of thermal energy is lost to the environment and not used. The burning coal is used to heat water, which spins turbines, and 40 joules of the kinetic energy of the water is unused. And as the electricity created is transported through a power line, 20 joules of energy is lost to thermal energy. And the rest of the energy in the power plant arrives as electrical energy in homes. So that's a lot, but we can use a Sankey diagram to make it look simple. Again, I'm going to say that each box is 20 joules, so my rectangle is going to have to be 8 boxes high for 160 joules, and that's chemical going in, because coal contains chemical energy. So coal is burned, and some heat is lost here, and that's going to be exactly 3 boxes high or 3 boxes long, because it's 60 joules of heat energy being lost as thermal energy, and the rest stays as good energy for now. But later on, 40 joules of the kinetic energy is lost to water, so that's lost. And you can see that that arrow has a height of two boxes for 40 joules, and the rest stays in the system. And finally, 20 joules of energy is lost to thermal energy in transmission. 
and the rest of the energy arrives as electrical energy in homes. So that's what a more complicated Sankey diagram would look like, and you can see that this still does a pretty good job of showing us the proportion of how much energy is lost at each point versus how much useful energy we end up getting out of the Sankey diagram. Sankey diagrams are used very often to represent energy. As an example, this is kind of like the ultimate Sankey diagram for the United States. This shows the total US energy consumption, and you can see different sources of energy going into different parts of the economy, different parts of society, and where the energy goes after as well. As a final note, we can use Sankey diagrams to calculate the efficiency of a system even if we don't know the values of the boxes. We can compare the amount of useful energy out to the total energy in. As an example, to find the efficiency of the system, I can see that because efficiency is the useful work out over the total work in, here there are two boxes of kinetic energy which is labeled as the good energy that we want coming out, and there are five boxes of chemical energy going in. So the efficiency is going to be a ratio of two to five. It's not necessarily true that there are two joules of kinetic energy and five joules of chemical, but the ratio between them is definitely going to be two to five. So because efficiency is a ratio, that can tell us the efficiency is two-fifths or 0.4 or 40%. And that's what you need to know about drawing Sankey diagrams.